Gaming Movie Jerks. Today I'm going to do my top 10 list of my favorite games of all time. So, uh, it's going to be fun. Without further ado, let's get started. First on the list is Sniper Elite 4, a game where you play as a lone wolf sniper who stands against the Third Reich with his stealthy skills. I'm not usually a lover of stealth games, but this one just did it perfectly. The game adheres to similar stealth mechanics of most games in the same genre, but it makes the stealth less optional. In most stealth games I've spent time playing, I noticed you could just blast your way through a level at ridiculous speeds, but in Sniper Elite 4, remaining stealthy at all times makes the game a lot easier. Trying to blast your way through this game will only leave you dead, over and over again. Although it is possible on easier difficulties, I legitimately can't do this on hard, or let alone authentic mode. Not to mention, I love most games where you get to kill endless Nazis. It is, and always will be, gratifying. At number 9 on my list is Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. In this game, you must once again save Princess Zelda. It's basically an upgraded version of the first game, which is great because the first game is already excellent. It's simply a classic, and when I think of the legendary Legend of Zelda series, this is the game I always think of first. It is just the best Zelda game out there, in my opinion. The controls are tight, the world and lore are interesting, the magical absurdity is awesome, and the graphics are stunning for the time. Although I do find the difficulty jump upon entering the Dark World is a bit asinine. Also, a big oversight that we experienced in our playthrough is that if you don't grab the Moon Pearl item before you go to the Dark World, you are completely screwed. If you haven't seen us play it, then please check it out. All in all, Link to the Past is the best Zelda game bar none. And if you haven't checked it out, you should. At number 8 on my list is Rainbow Six Siege, a game where five highly trained operatives work together to take down another five expert operatives. The game has a very unique operator system where each character has a special tool unique to them. While that doesn't seem unique now, I think that Siege created that trope, or at least popularized it. I must mention that I both love and hate this game. While the game is enjoyable when you're winning, I don't find it very pleasant when you're losing. I'll get into this game for a month or two, get really good, then get bored and drop it again. Then when I pick it back up, I completely suck. Overall, the game is ridiculously fun, but it, it did spawn a bunch of other games that I don't much care for. I also want to say I think that the operators are getting a bit ridiculous, and you can't deny that Oryx, who can dash through walls, certainly reveals that the developers are running out of ideas. I understand that running out of ideas is the only drawback of doing something so unique and creative, but still, I think that there are substantially more ideas out there waiting to be used. Next on my list is Dusk, a fantastic 90s themed first person shooter. You blast your way through the levels at nonsensical speeds and use the shoot at it until it dies philosophy to defeat your evil doing foes. This game took the 90s FPS philosophy and ran with it. The general feel of the games of that era is certainly present and done very well. This game is just solid. It controls perfectly and the guns are satisfying to use. Speaking of the loadout, I like literally every gun in this game. A usual fault of old shooters is that the starting pistol was just useless, but in this game they used the dual wielding mechanic to outright solve these problems of its 90s themed predecessors like Doom and Quake. In an era of endless generic Call of Duty ripoffs, Dusk stands out as an excellent homage to the games that truly make the FPS genre great. At number 6 on my list is Gary's Mod. Gary's Mod is weird, dude. It is a game, but completely different than pretty much any other game I have ever played. It's a sandbox game where you install other people's mods and play with them on a map that somebody else created. Unless, of course, you make your own stuff. If you get the right mods, the game can be stupidly fun, but if you get unlucky and you keep getting mods that flat out don't work, it will be stupidly stupid. That's my problem with the game. The in-game workshop is unintuitive and it makes things really hard to find. Steam Workshop is an improvement, but certainly not perfect, as I find that the search mechanic rarely works right. Whether or not this counts against the game itself is up for debate. But again, if you find good add-ons, as they're called, the game can be really fun. The thing that makes this game hard to talk about is the unique experiences that the game presents to its players. I mean, that's all I can say is that it's fun. I can't mention specifics because of this. Overall, this game is great, but definitely do some research on what some of the best add-ons are. I don't need to tell you about at all is Minecraft. It's number five on my list. It requires no introduction. It's, well, it's Minecraft, you know? The game has spawned a plethora of creative ideas among kids and adults alike. 
Whether you want to play to fight for your survival, kill for food, mine for resources, or journey across seemingly infinite land, or if you want to have infinite everything and build an awesome house, or castle, or movie theater, or church, or military base, or, well, you get the point. Endless possibilities. I simply don't need to tell you more. It is... it is... it's Minecraft. Next on my list at number four is Bioshock 1. Holy crap, what a magnificent game. It's a first-person shooter with elements of horror, fantasy, and steampunk. The atmosphere is dark, but interesting while the story itself uses great characters to paint the entire destruction of the city you're in. The mix of magic you can use is interesting. One of the key aspects is ascertaining which amazing arcane ability is best to annihilate your awesome adversaries. My only problem I have with this game is that while it's a linear game, I found myself getting lost a lot more often than I'd like to admit. I think it's because each part of a level looks very similar, especially if you're not paying a whole lot of attention. But overall, the game is fantastic. Pay attention and look for landmarks, you'll have a butt-ton of fun. At number three is one of the best games I've ever played, Red Dead Redemption 2. It's outfitted with great exploration, well-designed shooting, and if you get really bored, story missions. I'm obviously joking. Story missions are essential to, you guessed it, the story. The amazing characters and magnificent work of art that ease the plot and story of this game is what shines. The shooting is fun at first, but after a while you realize shooting is pretty much all there is to any mission. You go somewhere, shoot someone, and go back, with a lot of talking in between. That's pretty much every mission. My point is that you don't play this game for the shooter aspect. You play it because you want to experience the characters and their story. Or if you want to be really sad. Overall, the game is fun to play, though it does, it does get repetitive. However, the story is what drives it this far up my list, despite how depressing it is at times. At number two is Hollow Knight. It's really odd, but also really interesting. At my first go, I despised this game, and was deeply saddened that I spent money on it. However, a few months later, I tried it once again. This time, I found what I was supposed to do, and I loved pretty much every second of it. If you know what your goal is, or if you're discovering something new, this game is ridiculously fun and will suck you right into playing it for several hours straight. However, if you don't know what to do, you're probably not having a whole lot of fun, which means you're going to look it up. And where's the fun in that? This game can be infuriatingly hard for some, but I never thought it to be as hard as other great indie games like Shovel Knight and The Messenger. The secret of story is intriguing and hooks you into playing through the whole game to find out what happened. However, what is so cool about it is that it never gives you a straight answer to anything. Everything is cryptid and shrouded in mystery. Overall, it's a damn good play. And if you get stuck, don't look it up. You'll find out way more information than you ever wanted to know. Before I get to my number one, I wanted to mention a few games that couldn't quite make the list. First is Pokemon Gold, or really just the first three generations, though the second generation is my favorite. I don't need to say much other than the vast world of Pokemon featured in these games make for a great RPG adventure. The second is Verdun, a World War I themed online multiplayer shooter. It was developed by a very small team and it deserves some more attention. The game is incredibly historically accurate, right down to the fact that you tend to die a lot. But seriously, this game perfectly represents the Western Front of World War I, and it's one of the most unique and fun online shooters ever made. At number one is Half-Life 2. Half-Life is the greatest game series ever created, and Half-Life 2 is the best game in the series, which in turn means it must be the best game of all time. It's perfect. It released all the way back in 2004, and it still looks good, and uses amazing physics even when compared to some games that came out much more recently. The characters are perfect and easily likable. The story is an important aspect, but it never feels overbearing. The puzzle aspects are goddamn awesome as well. Not to mention that multiple sequences were mind-boggling then and now. For example, driving the swamp boat is some of the most fun I've ever had. Driving the dune buggy is magnificent as well. But it is an FPS, so shooting is what really matters. Good thing the shooting mechanics in this game are actually better than perfect. Every gun has its use and is thoroughly enjoyable. I have never seen anything like the gravity gun before, and in the end when it gets really powerful, it is, again, some of the most fun I have ever played. My point is, if you haven't played this game, do it. Do it now. Every single aspect a shooter, or really any game, should have, Half-Life 2 does it perfectly. Not to mention that it also spawned its two episodes that were both awesome games, and out of it came my favorite VR game of all time, Half-Life Alex. Well, I hope you enjoyed, and please comment down below some of your favorite games. We would love to see them. 
Anyways, we'll see you guys next time in the game of Jerks, and stay tuned for Nick's and Jordan's list of their favorite games.